Hello friends, I'm Cliffhanger, you are on my channel and today I will tell you about a movie in which a woman is left handcuffed to her dead husband as part of a sick revenge plot. Unable to unshackle, she has to survive as two killers arrive to finish her off. A young woman, Emma, is driving through the city at night and is sad and she had to break up with a guy named Tom. She feels good with him and he takes care of her. Emma didn't want to end the relationship, but there is just one little problem. She's married to another man. The next day is Emma and her husband's wedding anniversary. She comes to his office and we understand that her husband is a successful lawyer. Noticing confidential documents on the table, Emma does not hold back and looks at them, learning that her husband is on the case of a man who tried to rob Emma and even stabbed her in the back. Suddenly, her husband Mark arrives, and Emma quickly closes the paperwork. Going down the elevator, the couple meet Tom. It turns out he works for Emma's husband. Young people do not give out that they are familiar. Dinner at a very expensive restaurant, Mark surprises his wife with a gift. A steel necklace in honor of the steel anniversary. After dinner, the man says that he has prepared another surprise. Emma finds a bandage in her pocket and blindfolded. Her husband drives her to a secluded lake house, which was a happy place for them at the beginning of their relationship. At home, having removed the bandage, Emma finds the wedding woes of the spouses on the table and then follows the clues and finds Mark in the bedroom, where he apologizes for being a bad husband for her. Emma is touched by his words. She believes Mark and the couple make love. In the morning, the girl wakes up, but soon realizes that she is handcuffed to her husband sitting next to her. She asks him what is the matter. What the fuck is this? But Mark, without further words, shoots himself in the head. Emma pushes away her husband's body in shock, but falls right on him. After a while, Emma calms down and tries to decide what to do next. The first thing she tries is to use the phone, but of course it doesn't work. She then tries to shoot the chain off with Mark's gun, but he has it all figured out and there are no more bullets in it. So Emma just throws it on the floor. Then the girl drags the corpse of her husband to the wardrobe and sees that only her wedding dress is left there, behind which there is a safe. Emma puts a dress under Mark's body and directs him down the stairs. Not really successfully. Miraculously, without breaking her bones, the woman searches the house and realizes that her husband has destroyed her phone and removed all the sharp objects from the drawers. Here's a tricky one. But in the bin, Emma finds the keys to the car which is just in the garage. Dressed in Mark's clothes, uh, Emma drags his body to the garage and puts him in the car. The girl starts the car without any problems, but it soon stalls. Obviously, Mark drained the gasoline in advance, and the radio tape recorder plays a mocking message from her husband where he congratulates her on their anniversary, tells that he found out about her betrayal with Tom and shot himself because he could not survive such a shame. Emma again drags the body into the house and washes herself for washing off her husband's blood. She also tries to remove Mark's steel gift, but is unable to do so. It's not a necklace. It's a collar. 
After that, the girl goes down to the basement, hoping to use the tools from the workshop. But surprise, surprise, they are not there. The tired woman loses her nerves and she accuses Mark in hypocrisy. How many fucking times did I wash lipstick and glitter off of your fucking shirts? In one of the rooms of the house, Emma finds photographs of herself with Tom. Apparently, they were being followed. There is also a picture of Emma, who was beaten up after the attack of the robber. But the most terrible for her is the photo of a criminal named Bobby, who did it. She turns on the record player and listens to a recording of her voice, where she tells the police that Bobby stabbed her in the back. But she was able to fight back and hit him in the eye with her kiss and saved her life. Suddenly, she hears the sound of a car pulling up. The girl goes to the door and it turns out that Tom has arrived. He says that he received a message from her asking for help. When Emma opens the door, Tom is really surprised by the corpse strapped to his lover's arm. But the girl quickly explains everything. Tom also tells her that the prosecutor's office filed charges against Mark last night because of the falsification of several cases. So Mark knew that his career was over. Emma wants Tom to call the police, but he explains that while he believes her, the cops will find this story suspicious, especially since she washed the blood from her face. Emma freaks out and insists that Tommy call the cops anyway. He agrees and is about to go out to get the phone, but they see that a car arriving. He tells Emma to hide while he goes outside. The man who drove up comes up to Tom and says that he was called to fix the pipe. Tom tries to pay off the man and gives him money. He does not leave and the situation is heating up, but then another man gets out of the car. He does not waste time talking, approaches Tom and immediately stabs him with a knife a few times. Emma realizes it's Bobby, the same criminal who attacked her and spent last 10 years in jail for that. Jimmy, Bobby's brother, is very upset that they had to kill Tom and apologizes to him as he takes his last breath. Jimmy asks his brother to leave, but Bobby reminds they need to find the girl first. Bobby goes upstairs and discovers the safe. Emma, meanwhile, manages to escape the house, but Jimmy notices a trail of blood in the snow and follows it into the barn. The girl finds an anchor in the barn and tries to cut off her husband's hand. But at that moment Jimmy enters there and she has to hide in the boat. The guy does not notice Emma, but he notices the naked and mutilated corpse of Mark, because of which he gets scared and runs back to the house. But when two brothers come to the barn, the girl has already managed to free herself from her husband's body and hide. She overhears Bobby revealing that it was Mark who hired them. Jimmy only wants to open the safe and leave, but the brother explains that they need to find the woman, because only she knows the code to the safe. Bobby notices the trail of blood and realizes that Emma is without shoes and therefore could not have gone far. When the criminals are gone, Emma finds fuel in the boat that will also work for the car. Meanwhile, Jimmy tells his brother that in order to open the safe, you need not only a code, but also a fingerprint, so he goes to Mark's corpse. Emma is dragging a canister of fuel to the car. Only God's providence and Jimmy in attention saves her from him. In the garage she begins to fill the car. However, 
Bobby enters the garage and pierces the car's tires, forcing Emma to run to the basement. She is trapped. One brother is already in the basement and the second is about to open the door from the other side. Luckily, she manages to set the car's alarm, which distracts the brothers and gives her a chance. The brothers have an argument. Jimmy wants to leave right now, but Bobby convinces him that the work needs to be done, because while he was in prison, they lost their house, and Bobby is sure that Emma is to blame for this. They guess that the girl was somewhere nearby all the time and go to look for her again. But they find that Tom's coat and boots are no longer on the corpse. Bobby hears a noise in the attic and goes there, but it turns out that Emma set a trap. The girl hits him on the head with a golf club, knocking him out, and when his brother comes running to the noise, she beats him too. Tiger Woods would approve, and then locks him in a room. Then the girl tries to escape in Tom's car, but the brothers catch her. Emma managed to call 911, but Bobby immediately destroyed the phone. After another heated argument with his brother, Bobby knocks out the girl. She wakes up chained to her husband again and tells the robbers that she doesn't know the code to the safe. Bobby, threatening the girl with a knife, says that Mark told him that the code to the safe was the day he proposed to her. Emma still refuses to tell the date because she understands that after that she will simply be killed. Bobby is about to start torturing her to get a date, but Jimmy, having a conscience walk up, finds Mark's gun under the bed and points it at his brother. He doesn't want anyone else to get hurt. Emma, knowing that the gun is out of bullets, agrees to help them and give them the code, but only if she is unfastened from Mark. Jimmy unfastens her, and she, keeping her word, says the date. Bobby opens the safe but sees no diamonds inside, only a hacksaw that hints that the diamonds are in the necklace, in that necklace that can't be taken off. And while Jimmy is trying to remove the necklace, Bobby is going to cut off Emma's head with a smear. He takes the gun from his brother and knocks him out, but when he is about to shoot Emma, he realizes that there are no bullets in the gun. A fight starts during which Bobby accidentally kills his younger brother. He again blames Emma for everything, and while the girl had the knife, the criminal easily takes it away and wounds her in the leg. Despite this, Emma manages to pick up the tool and hit Bobby on the head, then handcuff him to Mark. Uh, poor Mark, he's already been dragged by everyone. Emma runs to the car and drives out to the garage on the last of the fuel, running over Mark and hitting Bobby. However, she loses control and crashes into a barn. Bobby, still alive, walks to the car with the knife and Mark, but the girl manages to get out. She crawls on the ice with the last of her strengths, covered in blood and barefoot. Bobby catches up to her, but Emma manages to stab him in the shoulder with a knife. The ice cracks and Mark falls into the icy lake, dragging Bobby with him, who in turn grabs Emma. Already underwater, the girl pulls a knife from the shoulder of the criminal and plunges it into the eye, the same eye that she hit with the keys ten years ago. Bobby releases her as he slowly descends into the darkness. What a terrible death. Already out of breath, Emma barely breaks the ice and climbs to the surface. She removes her wedding ring and throws it into the lake, where her insane husband lies. And in distance she hears police sirens approaching. 
I hope that Megan Fox's Emma doesn't die of hypothermia. And thank you very much for watching, friends. Write what you think about this movie and be sure to be subscribed. And see you soon.